What's up guys, it's boy Justin with another fantasy graphic novel review. Today we're reviewing Grimwood's Daughter, which is written by Jan Strand with art by Kevin Nowlin. And this this uh, this is a hardcover by ID, uh, IDW, which is like Idea Works or something. I can't remember. Idea Dream Works or whatever. I, I don't remember what IDW stands for but yeah i paid like 15 bucks for this and uh this this book has black and white art and it and the the story in this book is actually a reprint of uh, of a, a story that was originally printed in dal golda which was some kind of fantasy anthology magazine apparently right uh, which they don't tell you when th this magazine was originally published, uh, but uh, this this graphic novel came out in 2009. Yeah, so the this so it's in black and white. The story for this graphic novel is you have the main character here, uh, Terrell, which there's Terrell here, and the main story of this book is that the uh, uh, it's not sure. It's not clear if this is supposed to be a fantasy world or this is supposed to be our world back when, back in the Middle Ages or whatever when elves were still around. But yeah, this is this this graphic novel tells the story about the final days of the elves, who are getting basically genocided by man, right? And our main character Terrell of Grimwood Clan is there to. Um, Recruit the uh, Fire Clan to join the Alliance at Grimwood Castle, his ancestral home. But the only they've been wiped out by the humans, and the only one there is this old elf named Lon, who is uh, Terrell's cousin. So they they head back to uh, the castle, right? Grimwood's castle, right? And uh, the ancestral home of uh, Terrell. And it's protected by the Grimwood Forest, which is a enchanted forest, where if you if you uh, like cut a branch or step on a plant or, or flower or something, uh, the magic of the the forest will kill you, right? And we get introduced we get introduced to this concept by two Spriggans. Here, which are like thieving elves who are trying to break into like a storeroom to steal some of the treasures, right? And they end up uh, breaking, like you know, getting uh, you know hit with the curse. And this dude, this dude's brother, loses an arm, right? And uh, this is supposed to be the sister of Terrell and her husband, right? So you have some magic here. But yeah, like, yeah, you have some, they have like an illusionary uh, wall, right, where, uh, entrance. Yeah, so Terrell comes back telling them, hey, we got, like, you know, my cousin Lon jo is joining the fight. We get introduced to his niece, Lena, here. And uh, they have, like, this uh, assembly here where they're talking about strategy and what, what to do. Terrell wants to retreat and leave Grimwood's force and take take the humans, you know. I mean, take the elves and flee the humans. And we get, like, a backstory on how the war with the elves, how the war with elves and man started, where at first humans couldn't see elves, so, hum so elves would, you know, troll humans, like, knock them down, um bewitch their their milk and cheese so so as much so humans would eat and then not get any get any nutrition so they would starve you know they would bewitch the animals or they were born with two heads and they would like um they would destroy the crops and they would even steal kids and replace them with changelings right which is their, which was their biggest downfall because the changelings gave uh, birth to magicians, humans that could use magic, and that's when like humans, uh, 
the, the, the magicians were able to give man the ability to see elves and breed dragons. So that's when the war between humans and elves started, right? So, like, it's, it's, it tells you here that, like, oh, they're, you know, the war, the war between humans and elves w w wasn't, you know, uh, there was a reason why it happened, <laughs> you know, the, the elves didn't do nothing, did do something, right? So, yeah, like, uh, you have, like, Taro's, like, arguing with his cousin, Lon, who wants to flee, but, like, no, Taro wants to flee, but, like, Lon wants to stay and fight. Which is dumb, because they have... The humans way outnumber them, right? And, like, you know, they're just going to get killed, right? So, yeah, like, um... Taro leaves on this white stag f through Grimwood Force, and we get introduced to the... the character that the book is named after, Grimwood's daughter, right? Who is an elemental... Um, em yes, sorry... An elemental, who, who looks like an elf, but she's actually elemental, and she's actually the lover of Terrell. And, you know, like, uh, Lon uh, snuck into Grimwood's uh, force, so normally she would kill anybody who, like, you know, uh, would break a branch or something in Grimwood's force, but she just breaks a, a finger, right? So it's, uh, yeah, so the elves are kind of brutal, right? Well, she's technically not an elf. She's a, a mental. So, yeah, what happens is, like, Terrell, Lon goes back, uh, Terrell bangs his uh, girlfriend, and, you know, the the humans, the humans led by the magician Noel on his dragon um, start the attack on the elves. And it's pretty brutal, right? And the, the, this is a very dark story because, like, the the dr like the magician will drop a bag of death fruit, and it's implied that he at the start of every battle he 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 gives the elves bags of death fruit so they can kill themselves, right? And you see like a one one of the women take it, right? And like that's where the the battle starts, and like. The, the guy who lost his arm loses his brother and flees. Yeah, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty dark story, right? Yeah, you see, like, uh, uh, Terrell's, like, sister and brother-in-law kill Lena with the death root. Unks is dead. And, like, you know, Terrell was like, oh, man. Uh, Terrell was trying to, to flee, but, like, after seeing, like, uh people dying, he's like, I'm not gonna die a coward's death, I'm gonna fight, only for him to, like, uh, get knocked out in battle, and, like, uh, knocked out in battle, for, for, like, the white stag to show up, and Lon puts, uh, Taro's body on the white stag, and, you know, he flees the battle, and, like, the, the chapter, like, the, the final chapter is, like, everybody's dead except for Taro, and then he, he lives, you know, him and, like, Grimwood's daughter flees north, right? Because uh, the, the dragons are burning the forest, right? And then uh, the, book en the book ends with uh, the, uh, the leader of the human warriors and Noel, the magician, like, you know, uh, you know, talking about, like, you know, how he thinks, like, the, like, you know, the magician thinks, like, all people's lives are, you know, have their time, right? Their, their time and place. But, like, this guy's like, oh, man is eternal. Man, do you hear that, old Scorch? He says the season of man is eternal. What's more, I think he believes it, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that's the book ends. So, like, it's that book. The main story of the book is only, like, 47 pages, and the rest is just bonus material. So, what I think about this book... Oh, boy. Uh, I think the story was interesting. The art was good. It had this gothic look to it, which I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it has this gothic look to it. Maybe that's because it was 
printed black and white, and, like, the characters all have, like, a, like, um, oh, fuck, what's the guy from The Cure? Robert Smith. They all have Robert Smith hair. <laughs> Right, but like I, I, I don't know. I like the the book. Uh, it's very, it's very a dark story. It's very, very much a dark story. But like I don't. Know, my problem with the book is that uh, it's bro broken up into chapters, and the chapters are super short. And the it has this like a, like a very like quick and sudden ending, right? <laughs> like it, the book, the story is too short. Right, and that, that, that had probably had to do with the fact that, you know, each chapter was probably, like, you know, um, part of, like, a single issue of Dal Golda, right, while well, that was being printed along with other stories, right, so you're not, you're not really getting a full story, really, um, because it's, like, the, it's just too short, right, but, like, overall, I thought it was good, the art's good, um, it's a thing where it's, this is very short, even for 15 bucks. <laughs> like, this is barely, this is like, this is like the size of like two issues, basically. So it's like, I, I honestly don't know if I can recommend this book, but based off what I read, I would say this is like a 6 out of 10. Uh, only get it really if you're a fan of like fantasy art, right? Fantasy, like, you know, fan, like fantasy stories in general, right? Um, but yeah, so that's it for this, uh, review, guys. Our next comic book review is going to be the Silver Age Green Lantern Volume 1. I already started reading this the other day, uh, and I'm enjoying it so far, but it's probably, it's a thick, it's a thick book, so it's going to take me a while, right? So yeah, that's it for this review.